a lot of things right and a lot of things wrong. If you've not got any kind of grit about you, determination, resilience, whatever word you want to use, um, yeah, you ain't going to get very far in the sport. Mash your ego to bits each and every day that you come in the gym. And then it's a case of going in there and who's a better man on the night and who makes their game plan work. For the time, I fucking hated him. Um, and there'd have been a few times where I was like, fuck this sport, I can't be arsed, I don't want to do it no more. And who's the hungrier man? And who's going to stand in front of the other one the longest? And who's going to take a knee and give up? It was peace and quiet in my own mind, although that seems mental. Someone's trying to kick my head in, and I've got two broken arms trying to fight him off. Always being able to find a way around whatever it is that's in your way. Hello? Check, check. I'm just going to go for a little bit of an introduction. Oh, yeah. So, what's your name, kind of where you're from? Yeah. Uh, name's Josh McManus, from Leicester, um, owner, of, owner and coach of First Legion Gym alongside my dad and brother. Um, also owner of Clinch Mob Fight, where based in Leicester in the same gym as well. So have you always been a gym rat then from, from young? Have you always loved that you kind of knew you was going to be a fighter? Um, it was never I, swayed? I, yeah, I just... I played rugby for years. I played rugby from when I was six until 16. Played at a good level in rugby. and I've just always enjoyed like physical sports but when I started jiu-jitsu and I played rugby at the same time a lot of the stuff that I learned in jiu-jitsu was so tra so transferable into my rugby games with just how to control someone through collars choking people out um, obviously like, rugby's a rough game I used to play in the second row I was right in the middle of all of it it can get a little bit rough in there people chucking heads about, trying to stamp on you. So it was, it was so transferable into sport, I just kind of fell in love with jiu-jitsu. Um, and yeah, it got to a point where I was playing both. I was competing at jiu-jitsu at the time, obviously competing at a good level all up and down the UK. Um, playing at a good academy level in rugby. And I just kind of, made the choice to really have a crack at going for the fighting. You said you had your first MMA fight at 15. Mm. How old was the person that you fought? He was 22. Um, so I had my first my first MMA fight when I was 15, and it was in a tournament. It's kind of like a, it kind of, the setup of the tournament was like a football league. So you went to five or six different locations and gyms through the year. When you went there, um, the rule set was no headshots, punches to the body, elbows, knees to the body, all submissions were on. So the only thing you couldn't do was headshots. Um, so it was like an experience builder for anyone that was amateur at the time. Um, yeah, you got, went in, you had two fights on the day. Each fight was one five minute round. And yeah, the first lad I fought when I was 15 was 22. And then the lad I fought after him on that day was older than that. I think he was like 25. And he'd had a couple of what was at the time semi-pro fights in MMA. Um, and then I entered that tournament, fought in that for a year um, and won it. And I jumped in and had my first. Oh, it was A class amateur at the time. So it was punches to the head, ground and pound, you can knee to the head at the time. Um, all takedowns, the only submissions you weren't allowed were like twisters, twisting leg locks. Still in school at the time, I was doing. When I had my first fight, I was doing like my GCSEs and just, yeah, at college, fucking about. And I was the only lad at my school that done any kind of MMA grappling. There was a couple of lads that boxed, but there was no one else really that done any kind of martial arts or tie boxing. Um, 
In fact, yeah, no one at my school that done any kind of other martial arts or Thai boxing were just a few boxers. But I spent most of my time in the gym, just going up and down, training at different places. At 16, I'd used to have a few days off and I'd go and train over in Nottingham with Rough House, original pioneers of UK MMA, Dan Hardy, Jimmy Warled, Paul Daly. Yeah, from a young age, being surrounded by and looking up to fighters like that were what's kind of brought me to where I am. The gym, with my dad being my coach, from a young age, I had no... I, I got worked harder than everyone else in the gym. He'd expect more than me than everyone else, um, which... Looking back at it now, you wouldn't ever be able to thank him enough. At the time, I fucking hated him. Um, and there'd have been a few times where I was like, fuck this sport, I can't be arsed, I don't want to do it no more. And, but it was just out of being that fucking tired and having someone push you so much. Um, but yeah, there's always a couple of times where you get that frustrated. And as soon as you're done and you get your breath back, you're like, fuck me, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good fight. Uh, <laughs> First Legion gym in Leicester is Josh Sicario McManus. <laughs> So the eighth contest of the Round evening one. here in Birmingham. I was willing to go another. Um, I don't think my opponent was. Um, yeah, I broke my left arm in the first round. He's landed, but you can see the power he's got. 77 kilos, these two guys. Condition. Oh, oh mate, I'll go through the middle there, though, from McManus. Oh, head landing. McManus needs to be careful. Big head kick. Oof. Yeah, I'd love to get at it and that's what they're doing right now lovely he was just a good kicker good kicker um and yeah i i wasn't in a good frame of mind in terms of my outside life at the time she's got the strength and the, the blunt force over Switching those stance, he's obviously hurting that leg. You can see it by the visuals. When I was in a ring was when I was at proper peace. And I'd felt something go wrong with my left arm in the first round, didn't really take much notice of it, didn't mention it to my corner. Went out for my second up round. It fucking kicked me in my right arm, that had broke. Uh, but it took the pain away from my left arm, so I was back to using my fucking left arm again. And then last round I'd come out and I thought, I've only got fucking three minutes left. I might as well just see it out and it's the worst that can happen. But yeah, it was, it was just... At the time when you're in the ring, as any other fight will say, you don't really feel the pain when you're in there from the adrenaline rush. And at the time, yeah, I was just in, I just enjoyed being in there. It was peace and quiet in my own mind, although that seems mental to hear when someone's trying to kick my head in and I've got two broken arms trying to fight him off. Absolutely nails, just taking these shots clean now, but almost no change in the facial expression whatsoever and there has to be an element of that the Horvat must be thinking blimey what have I got to do to to hurt this man to get him out of here I'd tore my ACL to bits I had to have my ACL reconstructed um, I was still fighting on it at the time but I couldn't train how I wanted to and then after I'd had my operation I could come in the gym but I couldn't hit no bags I was on crutches so I was just doing a little bit of weights trying to box, couldn't really box because I've got this big fucking brace on my leg and yeah, from going, I've always done the same. I'd just come gym early in the morning, stay here all day and leave in the evening. Maybe like a year's rehab 
before it was properly sorted again. Um, yeah, just knowing what to do myself. We weren't in this place, so it was just a small gym at the time. We didn't have all the classes on that we have now. I didn't have clinch mob. Um, I'd done a few PTs. I couldn't do them anymore because my leg was fucked. I couldn't move around an old pad, so I was just a bit like, what the fuck do I do myself? The hardest time for me of, yeah, just not having the thing that I wanted to do and being able to do it and not having the knowledge of finding a way around. Still being able to do something and, yeah, just thinking of my toes and, yeah, always being able to find a way around whatever it is that's in your way. A lot of things right and a lot of things wrong. Um, but the injuries that I've got have only made me more knowledgeable and a better coach for everybody else that comes through the doors. More so coaching, because that's been a lot more of my focus recently. Um, learning how to get the best out of someone is a real hard thing to get around, because everyone is different in how they take their information on board, um, how you can fire somebody up to get the best out of them, how you can get information across to somebody so that they understand it well. Um, and personally getting to know all of the people that come through the gym, whether they, whether they want to compete and fight. Some people need a bit more of a boost in confidence to get them out of the shell or if they're feeling down, just a little pick me up and then you've got on the other side, you've got people that come in, lazy bastards and they need shouting at but it's not, as I said before, it's not out of a way to make someone feel worse. If I'm shouting at you and calling you, a lot of the fighters I've called them fat bastards and lazy bastards. Out of the pure fact of they've got to get down, lose weight and they've got to want to pull their finger out there once more. And me trying to be nice about it, they don't, it doesn't get the same, across the same message as to when I raise my voice, I'll get I'll get a bite out of them because it'll frustrate them. That's my main aim, to try and get the best out of everybody and whether it's through aggression and them getting wound up and wanting to smash my head in. If it's getting an extra 20 or 30% out of them in the session, I've done my job well. Hard work and grit. Hard work and grit, they're the two that I think stand out more so than anything. Because um, everything is on you then. You're not expecting anybody else to push you. You can come down, you can do all your own cardio. Your bag should be your best friend. You, as a fighter, should be hitting that fucking bag all day long. If you've not got any kind of grit about you, determination, resilience, whatever word you want to use, um, yeah, you ain't going to get very far in the sport.